Hi, welcome to How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Based on my book of the same name, this podcast is here to help you have the wedding of your dreams and not the wedding that other people are putting pressure on you to have. I'm Ross, I'm a wedding photographer, passionate about embracing diversity and equality in the wedding industry. And each week I'm going to be talking to different experts to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. So regardless of who you're marrying, where you're marrying and how old you're going to be when you get married, sit back, relax and find out how to have a wedding as individual as you are. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. I'm back in London today, we've got some sultry jazz music in the background easing us into this and I'm joined by two wonderful women today who are going to help me talk about wedding fairs and how to survive a wedding fair, which sounds quite dramatic, but it can be overwhelming as well as really helpful and useful in finding perfect wedding suppliers. So welcome to the podcast, ladies, introduce yourselves and what you do. Thank you for having us, Ross. So I'm Diane Vu. And I'm Sophia Meach. And we are the proud owners of Events Inspired By, a company that brings you events that inspire and engage audiences. Wow, absolutely. And I've been part of your one of your fab events. So yeah, I know you've got lots of useful advice and information to share today. So that will be good fun. We'll have a nice, nice old chat and provide lots of uh, guidance for all these engaged couples listening that wondering why they should go to a fair or which one to go to or or what to do when they get there. So throughout today's discussion, we're going to help you find the right wedding fair for you so you don't waste time attending fairs that don't fit with your wedding style. And we're going to discuss how to make the most of a wedding fair and provide some tips on wedding fair etiquette. Mm -hmm. So there's little do's and don'ts that we can help you with to to help suppliers and help you to, to have a wonderful event. And we're going to explain what to look for in vendors and how to avoid those overly pushy sales people because they're always there lurking at some point they are sadly you're going to be harassed or bombarded with brochures and offers so just how to navigate your way around those and make sure you find the right supplies for you so we're going to start as ever by a few guest specific questions Uh, so why did you decide to organize a wedding fair and what did you want to do that was different from fairs you've been to before okay right i think i'll answer that question so basically we wanted to organize a wedding fair that was very different to what you traditionally see nowadays okay now it's not to say that we don't like the wedding fair (laughs) there we're not not throwing shade (laughs) we're not throwing any shade whatsoever to the wedding fairs that are already in existence but what we wanted to do is something very different and the element that we brought into it was making our wedding fair multicultural brilliant we really prided ourselves on having something that was very diverse yeah We wanted something that reflected society nowadays because we live in such a diverse society, as you know. And and we wanted it to be very inclusive as opposed to exclusive. Yeah. So that was the main reason um, behind creating a multicultural wedding fair. Brilliant. And we should say at this point that your wedding fair was called not just a wedding fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that we, would be quite crucial. Yeah. <laughs> we missed that, but we got to it. That's fine. We got We're still there. only three minutes in. So we, we, your wedding fair was called not just a wedding fair. Absolutely. And that was really summed it all up, really, because you did have workshops and seminars and talks and, and everything so you were yes. adding to the whole yeah. experience exactly. which which For is what made well, it different we wanted it to be that even the vendors that were actually attending the reason why we put it not just a wedding fair is we didn't want them to be in that pigeonhole box because a lot of the services you guys offer is not just exclusive to weddings some people have graduation parties some people have anniversaries yes um you know they have birthday parties so we wanted people to and we're just general corporate events yes so um considering our, our wedding fair was at wembley civic center um which is the council building you had so many business opportunities there with the actual center itself which is what the connections we wanted to also help make um, so yeah, that's another reason why we put it not just wedding place. Yeah, absolutely. Allow yeah. the vendors to yeah. show the diversity of the skills that's they have. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And on, and on top of that, actually, adding to that as well is that we wanted our um, vendors 
to be diverse as yes. well. So yeah. we wanted to make sure that there was diversity in terms of not just the products and services that they were able to provide, but also making sure that when people came in and saw the room, that they saw, you know, this rainbow of colours. Yeah, because it is diverse and a representation enough. of exactly. themselves. And exactly. I think definitely that's what's been lacking in a lot of wedding fairs and, sure. and the wedding industry. Absolutely. Um, hence the book and this podcast, because there is that kind of very narrow depiction of weddings and what they look like and what an engaged couple look like, whether that's majoritively white and straight and young and slim and and all sorts of shapes and sizes and colours get married, but that's not always fully reflected, which is something I'm passionate about and I know you're passionate about as well. So that was what was so refreshing about your fair, absolutely. And I know that you've had quite a negative experience at wedding fairs as, a, as an exhibitor <laughs> can you can you share some details so um, I actually have a company called not just travel Sophia Leach and um, and that's exactly what I do I focus on uh, destination weddings um, general travel but my passion is weddings definitely I love to see everyone's special day um, and try to get a free invite if I can <laughs> um, <laughs> but I actually attended a wedding fair well a few a lot and um, the last time I went to was the reason why I actually decided to pose that idea to Diane, my partner, that we should do our own. Reason being, went there, there wasn't really a lot of diversity, there was like five <laughs> photographers in one room. Oh my goodness, two, I've been there, yes. Yeah. But there was only 12 of us there, so there only, were only 12 vendors there. And five, five of them were photographers, yeah. and they, nightmare. They looked like, it was like, it was almost like <laughs> the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, they That's gonna, extreme. Yeah, like, they were going to pounce on everyone that came in to kind of get their attention, not realising that if they looked a bit closer, they were very different. Yeah. And I don't think one client would probably pick the other the other person and so forth. Yeah. So um, for me, I found that the vendors seemed very quite clueless of how to even navigate a smaller, more intimate affair. Right. Um, they didn't know what their unique selling points were. Um, when it came to actually seeing uh, vendors that had like food, you just had, you didn't even have menus, you didn't have, it was just literally just a table with crisps on it and oh business cards. Goodness. So for me, I thought that there's a lot of, you know, um, businesses in their first year that haven't quite got the guidance of knowing how to proper represent their business and proper represent their services that they can offer. Yeah. Um, so I went away completely. Well, I went away with business, so I can't complain that much, but <laughs> I think I was probably the only one in the building that did, but that's because I, I had cupcakes, I came prepared. <laughs> you knew what you were doing, <laughs> yeah, prepared. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, we wanted to definitely do it um, better and be more supportive to vendors. Yes. Um, I never met the organiser of that particular event. Wow. She left early. Um, I was left to close the building on my own. Oh my goodness. Um, so there was a lot that went wrong. Um, and we just knew that we wanted to, be able to meet our vendors, know their businesses inside out. Build um, that relationship. Yeah, yeah build absolutely. Build a relationship that we can use it for years to come. So as soon as we, we have somebody who says, oh, I need, you know, a photographer, we know a guy. You know, straight away. <laughs> you know so we wanted to Excellent. be that kind of Yeah, absolutely. And even in my travel business now, because obviously I exhibited at our own wedding fair, I have, vend- I have um, customers that will ask me, knowing that I know people so yeah. oh, do you know somebody can get this for me of course I do yeah and that's what we wanted to do building up that network yeah. of trusted suppliers which exactly. is really important exactly. yeah absolutely um, so do you have any do's and don'ts for couples that are attending their first wedding fair <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the case of coming prepared right so having those questions that you want to ask obviously not when you come to a wedding fair you may not know you might have a rough idea of what you want your wedding to to be like yes but it's not nothing's going to be set in stone no and often when you come to wedding fairs anyway you get inspired hence you know yeah, <laughs> hence the inspired. name yeah hence the name. <laughs> get that but, plug in <laughs> exactly but you get inspired don't you by the other exhibitors and also the people around you but i think you can still come to some extent prepared uh, with questions mm-hmm. don't feel intimidated to, to ask no. exhibitors questions and like you mentioned you know you might get those occasional pushy <laughs> exhibitors yes. or vendors that just want to um, thrust a, a leaflet your way or fly your way but I think just coming with questions that you can ask and making sure you've kind of done your homework in a sense yes so you know the kind of right questions to ask so that you can leave away you know leave sorry leave the venue 
feeling like you know you've got all the information you've that you all want the, yeah, yeah exactly. i think that's very true and it's yeah. that balance between having a little bit of an idea of the mm -hmm. wedding you want mm -hmm. Um, but being open to absolutely. the influences that you find. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think if you don't have any thought whatsoever, mm -hmm. it's easy to get bombarded and overwhelmed and, and you'll be told 10 different things by 10 different people when you go around chatting. So it is that balance, yeah. isn't it? And but also end up spending a lot of money. Exactly. Yeah, right? that you don't, that you, yeah, that you haven't budgeted for or, yeah. or on things that you don't really want. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, I think, Fortunately, I think I'm the don't. So the first thing mm -hmm. I went to before I got married, I went not knowing anything. I, I, I always wanted to get married. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. And I always knew who the groom would be. That's really I, handy. Oh, always. Great. But I had no idea what my wedding should look like. I never dreamed about it. So for me, I went to a wedding fair as, you know, to find out what I liked. And unfortunately, the first time I ever went to, I made all the mistakes you just mentioned. I had no idea. I had no plan. I had no questions ready. I didn't know what was going to be, what style I liked. I didn't know what I didn't like, dislike. Um, so it was, it cost me money to go. It cost me money to buy a dress I didn't want. Oh no. <laughs> so I, I very much agree with the points you just made. I a did lot of regret. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. And then I also ended up going to one that didn't cater for me. You know, I'm a voluptuous woman and they didn't have voluptuous dresses. Oh. So I didn't I didn't feel like a princess on a day. I didn't feel like I was getting ready for my special day. It didn't it didn't cater for me at all. So you didn't sort of see yourself in no. in the services that were being provided, yeah. which is yeah. such a shame. But I think that's really, really common. I hear that a lot, that people are sort of shoehorned into mm. dresses or photographers or venues or whatever it is that don't really fit with them. So I think it's important to find a wedding fair where, you know, people do understand your needs and who you are as a couple and, and what you want. And, and wedding fairs do vary quite a bit, don't they? Yes, so absolutely. I think by having a, a, just an, an idea of whether you want, I don't know, a, a rustic wedding or a really yeah, high-end so posh cheap. hotel, you know, that, that's going to have such an impact on all the other vendors that you book. I just say at this point, we are in a lovely bar in London, so there is a little bit of people walking past. So we do <laughs> apologise for that, but um, lots more info coming up. So uh, we'll keep going. We'll, we'll carry on regardless. Absolutely. So, Can I just um, share another tip as well? Yes, please, yes, absolutely. Because I think another uh, crucial tip as well is that with um, vendors or professionals just like yourself or us, yes. <laughs> is that on the day is when you're more inclined to get those great offers, those great deals as yes. well. So in terms of, you know, being prepared for a wedding fair is be prepared to take up those offers that could potentially save you a lot of money. Yeah. You know? So that would be another tip as well when you're coming to um, when you're coming to the wedding fair. Yeah, is, definitely. Is take up those offers if they're you know if it's something that you think is going to be of value to you for your own wedding. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's where research comes in because if you if you look at wedding fairs online and think, okay, is, is that one going to be match my budget? Whether it's a huge budget or a small budget, mm -hmm. is that going to match my style? You can usually sort of research what vendors are going to be there, so you can have a little look in advance Absolutely. and see. And if you feel that yet yeah, these that my, like my type of photographers and mm -hmm. my type of florist and whatever then you can will be more prepared on the day if there is an offer to take it up okay. whereas if you go and it's your first time and you don't know you could potentially miss out because you want to go away and have a think and that's no bad thing you know if you're unsure about anything or if you're put under pressure to make a purchase on the day that you're not sure about don't do it so yeah. do go away and have a think and look through the literature and exactly. and take That's your true. time so yeah it's it's all about sort of knowing yourself mm -hmm. and and being quite firm and don't be afraid to say no and, and walk away because i think mm -hmm. some people do feel scared when they're at a wedding yeah, fair true. and you know some people are quite intimidating yes. with their stand yes. and they're standing mm -hmm. behind i always make a point of one not sitting down and two, not sitting behind a table because that table is a barrier mm -hmm. and it's almost like a position of power. Yes. And I think the people that are in front of their table, uh, they've just broken that sort of layer of, that di di dynamics changed a little bit. Um, they're a little bit more forthcoming and then you can have that conversation on a more equal level and, and really get to know that supplier. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of fab tips. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing I was going to say quickly is 
try not to go alone. Mm. And I think at your wedding it's quite good. Most people, if they didn't come with their partner, they'd come with their mum or their friend. Yeah, and right. I think that's really important that's because right. um, if you're not sure about things or you get sort of an impression of somebody, it's nice to go away and say, oh, I thought they were lovely. Did you like them? Or I thought they were a little bit patronising or a little bit cocky. Mm-hmm. Was that just me? And, yes. and you can kind of get that second opinion, which That's is really true. important. That's very true. And if there is someone pushy, if you, if you split up sometimes, if, you, if it's a big fair or, you know, you want to cover lots of, lots of ground, um, if there is someone really pushy that's sort of boring you to tears, at least you can say, oh, that's my friend over there waving, I think i got to get away, <laughs> which so works true. really well. But I, so I've true. been next to suppliers that have, I can see people losing the world to live when they're sort of mm-hmm. given like, you know, a rundown of all the songs the DJ's going to play you wow. and all the gigs he's done. And you think they don't want to, yeah. they don't want to know that. Yeah, so try not to go alone, that's I would true. say. But do not go with your shopaholic best friend. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> your friend, your plus one wisely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's I've true. Mis- that was my first mistake. I took my cousin who, he just, yeah, buy it. So I was like, should I not think? No, buy it. Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that friend you've always got that you drink more with, isn't it? There's always one that you go out and they're like, no, just have another. Just have an have Yeah, definitely. Yes. And make sure they know what your priorities are. Definitely. Because I think I say in the book, somebody could really get on with a photographer because they're a great laugh and they're going to be lots of fun, whereas actually your priority is someone that makes you feel comfortable that's a little bit more low-key. So make sure, even if they're quite different to you, personality-wise, they understand the type of people that you're, you're looking for. Absolutely. I think that's important because... Um, there's always that pressure that other people always have an opinion on your wedding, don't yes, they? Yes. So it's staying yes. in control of that as well. And Absolute. you highlight that in your book, don't you, Ross? Yes, Absolutely. I do. <laughs> Thank you. You're good at the plugs. You plug I you, am. you plug me. We like it. I knew it's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> catching up with you guys. <laughs> Lovely. <Yeah. laughs> Absolutely. Um, so your wedding fair that you did recently, mm-hmm. what, was, what were the highlights? What were you proud of? I think we were really proud of the fact that we were London's first multicultural wedding fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really think because that was a, I think that was a really big talk, talking point for a lot, lot of people. Yes. Because um, it's not been done before. No. And they love the idea. They, the feedback that we got is that, you know, you really did help to change the kind of look and feel of traditional wedding fairs. Yes. So I think that's something that we really are, are proud of, right? Mm-hmm. And also really proud of our exhibitors. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> we, had, we had amazing exhibitors um, at our wedding fair as well. And um, and their products and services were amazing as well. I mean, we vetted everybody. Yeah, it was <laughs> really diverse, everybody. a really exactly. diverse mix we of services. For, for that reason, exactly. Yes. Um, so we were really proud of that as well. I love for me, the, the biggest um, point for me was the fact that so many vendors learnt more about their own business. So, okay. Yeah, we, yeah. Had, we had a few vendors that, when we kind of put to them, do you, you, we found a way, or we found a, a, a kind of um, a challenge in the market, and you have a solution, but you haven't spoke about the fact that you found the solution. So okay. they're just showing their, their product, and yes. Um, and I thought, but you do know that you've now eliminated that old way of doing something, and you found a new way of doing it, but it didn't click to them. Okay. So for me, it was actually the one-to-ones of kind of like going around, especially with the newer brands, yes. and helping them find kind of like their footing of how they can fit in different different um, industries, not just like yeah, I mean, absolutely. so many brands that didn't have that awareness. That yeah. yeah, and I think it's really important, you know, it helps couples, because we've got a lot of couples listening that, you know, people should be able to help you solve a dilemma. Yeah. Every every vendor should not just oh they can do flowers or they can do yeah. you know my hair or whatever. What is what is the dilemma? You know oh they they know how to work with Afro Caribbean hair yeah. or they know how to make me feel comfortable in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. that's really important yeah. that that you talk to suppliers and and they it, go, it goes back to knowing what questions you want to ask, doesn't that's it? Right. What are your problems? Mm-hmm. And I think that's important for couples to know. And it's important for vendors to know how they solve those yes. problems. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's how suppliers stand out. So if you are going to a wedding fair where there are five photographers in a room of 12, <laughs> how are you going to distinguish? Yeah. And you think, well, what is it about photography yeah. that you like or that you don't like exactly. or that you're worried about? Exactly. And those five soon get whittled down to at least two. You know, that's not my style. They're really arty and I want it quite formal or, yeah. you know, they're nice and rustic and that suits our style. So we'll go with them or... 
we like their photos but they seem a bit up themselves or whatever it is and it and it's really you know it can be overwhelming I think or these if you've got lots of the same exactly. genre of vendor to, to to ask the right questions yeah, to get to the heart of of what you want yeah. and I and I think wedding fairs is such a good way of meeting people in person because yeah. websites are wonderful yeah. and we can all make our signs sales sign wonderful on a website can't we yeah. um but you have to ha- it, you know weddings are people focused exactly. aren't they so it's all about just picking up that that vibe and i know exhibiting at yours and, and exhibiting at all sorts and you know you try and chat to as many people walking past and you know as lovely as all the couples were some just weren't interested or there wasn't anything there wasn't a spark you know a bit like a first date but there wasn't a spark yeah. and others chatting was really easy yeah you know yeah. so it's 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 not always about having a really hard selling technique mm. or going with someone that sort of talks their way into yeah. your wallet it's, yeah. it's who do you click with yeah. at the very end true. of the day yeah, very true. you know very true. And, and and budget is is important mm-hmm. i think but i think sometimes you can be a little bit open-minded i think some people are like no we're spending two grand on a photographer they only charge 1200 we don't want them mm-hmm. whereas actually if you get on with them and you like their work that's fine or yes. you might you know you might spend a bit more on a florist because actually you really love her work and actually she gets you and she gets you that's on something right. different that's so right. it's kind of, you can't sort of beat meeting people in person can yeah. you that's why yeah. wedding fairs right. are so important so although I call this podcast and the chapter in the book how to survive a wedding fair mm-hmm. they are really positive yeah. positive things yeah, absolutely. the other thing i was going to talk to you about mm-hmm. is about body language so if you're going into a wedding fair and there's hundreds and not hundreds and hundreds but lots and lots of stores and vendors um obviously you don't always have time to sort of look at every vendor what what do you, what sort of body language or what sort of things um, are the you know good and bad in vendors to look out for or stay away from? I think you actually touched on something earlier, Ross, when you mentioned about you know having a table there and not yeah. just sitting at the desk. Yes. I think that's crucial. Not just sitting at the desk wait, waiting for people to come to you. Sometimes you need to just know how to draw people in. Yeah. Because someone might be approaching you, maybe a bit reluctant, you know, to come your way. Yes. Um, but you you will feel comfortable just by the way that they. Pre- come to you yeah you know the way feel present, welcome exactly yeah, they present I think so. and it's so in terms of the body language it's like you said you you stand in front of your desk and you welcome people and i think even just having a smile on your face obviously not overdoing it <laughs> <laughs> don't look a little bit sinister exactly. you go, come here <laughs> exactly. people will see right through that but just you know that you want to welcome these people and they will they will feel that they will feel that energy yes. that yeah it is energy, energy right? isn't it absolutely uh, yeah. yeah so i think I think, yeah, I think definitely, you know, as I said, it's, you know, and it's also, I think for exhibitors as well, it's understanding in terms of um, proximity, you know, and yes. kind of spatial awareness. So if That's you're just so going true. to throw yourself on somebody and someone can see you about yeah. to just leap on you, obviously that's going to be quite off-putting as well. Yeah. So I think, you know, someone's coming into a wedding fair, if you're going to see someone sitting down, someone sitting down, you know, um, you're probably more reluctant to want to just go over there because you're probably going to see it as they're not that interested in yeah. what they're providing, the service or the product that they're selling. Yeah, you know? so. absolutely. And I, and I would say a wedding really sort of, brings everyone's personalities to the fore. Mm-hmm. So if someone's quite pushy at a wedding fair, mm-hmm. imagine what they're like mm-hmm. on the day. Very or true. if they're quite shy and reserved at a wedding fair, yes. they're gonna be like that on the yes, day. So, true. you know, try and get a sense of, of how they're coming across, yeah, you know. And, and there's nothing wrong with liking the really loud, fun yeah. guy that's telling jokes and has got a crowd yeah, around yeah. him. If that's your thing, yeah. that's absolutely yeah, fine. That's right. But it's about being confident. There might be someone in the corner that's quite quiet that you're just somehow drawn to mm-hmm. and you get chatting and that's yeah, true. that's who you want yeah, so yeah true. it's 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 just being aware and and I think not feeling obliged to chat to every yeah, everyone yeah, I think people yeah. think they have to go to every single yeah. vendor and and you know some some you know you might have already booked certain people so you don't need to um and some you just sort of get get a feeling that that's not 
yeah. for you. Exactly. So I also have a have a good look around yeah, as well. Exactly. And well, I think as well with most wedding fairs, I mean, we did for us, we already had information that was clickable um, that took um, our attendees to the websites or social media yes. platforms for our vendors, for our exhibitors. So once you've got that information already, you kind of know who you want to see. Yes, I think the research yeah. is really yeah. important actually. Mm -hmm. And I think if you see a wedding fair and you can't see who the vendors are, mm -hmm. either contact the organiser, but be a little bit aware, because I think there's no excuse for not being on social media yeah. anymore. Yeah, and most couples are gonna be. So, you know, if there's a wedding fair advertised and you don't, can't see who's gonna be exhibiting, it's a little, I would say it's a little bit of a concern, yeah. really, mm -hmm. you know, all that information is, people want information, so yeah, it should be, right. should be out there in plenty of time. Yeah. And that's what you were great at, because we all had the chance to, show our work and get our personalities across on social media before people met us yeah. in person, which which I think makes a massive, massive difference. I, I, I do think, especially when it comes to obviously seeing vendors in person at a fair, it is quite an unusual um, and unorthodox way to meet somebody. It is, it, it's yes. Normal, it's a very standalone, yeah. isolated... Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're both actually not being completely yourselves, it's almost like it is a first date, like you said. Already. Yeah. So for me as a vendor, what I tend to do is I never stand behind the counter. I do, if it's someone who's actually quite timid and I can tell by their body language that they want space. A bit of space, that's fair enough. That. Um, and it's about remembering your own body language. We all know that kind of particular, the back of your, your you know, here on the back of your neck, like, eh, this person's a bit weird. Or, yeah. oh, this person's a bit too forward. Oh, let me say yeah. that a bit. We all know those natural things and it's actually just remembering to look, key into those things when you're yes. there. But more importantly, I think a good um, exhibitor should always actually try to follow up. And if, you, if they're a bit um, timid on the day, yeah. to arrange an actual meeting away from that. That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. what I tend to it's, do. It's, I a, always have follow -up meetings. it's an initial contact yeah, to build into a consultation. Yeah. No. And that comes down a little bit. We're going to talk about etiquette. Um, there's going to be a lot of other couples at the fair. Mm. So when you meet a supplier, it's just to get a feel for whether they might be right for you and then to contact them later or then to contact you later and book a consultation where you can sit and ask loads and loads and loads of questions, you know, and get to know each other. Um, but yeah, it is just that initial meeting and be aware that there are people probably behind you waiting to chat, so not to sort of stand there for 30 minutes. So it's kind of a double-edged mm -hmm. sort of answer, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's sort of from the, from the perspective of not sort of keeping others waiting. Yeah but also knowing that it's not, you don't have to make a decision in that instant if you, if you don't want to. Yeah. One of the other things, whilst I remembered when you were talking about that, about sort of instinctively knowing what's right, uh, in my book and in the first podcast I did when I was talking about pinpointing priorities, um, I spoke about talking to your partner about and just brainstorming what's really important to you in life and coming up with sort of three values that are really important to you um, and then relate that back to your wedding and I say to write it down and I think it's really good to take that with you to a wedding fair um, so I said you know in terms of life and my business um, diversity is really important to me that's why I loved your wedding fair um, family is really important and peace of mind is really important to me so I said at the time you know if there's something if I get offered a really great job that's loads of money if it's going to stress me out take me away from my family or if I don't agree with their values you know then I'm not going to do it um, so I think it's quite nice to have that written down and say, OK, it's a fantastic offer. They're being quite pushy. Let's have a look. Does this meet what's important to us? Mm -hmm. You know, so it just gives you that little reminder. Again, when you, we've got a friend or you're thinking spend, 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 yeah. spend, <laughs> just rein back and have a little look, yeah, yeah, you know. And what was great about your wedding fair is that there was lots of opportunities to sit down and have a drink and to come in and go out and come in and go yeah, out yes, which yes. I think is really nice because yeah. it wasn't just a one hit yeah come away and be bombarded yeah, people true. could take their time and people yeah, were coming back and I right. chatted to a groom and then he came back with his girlfriend yes. so you know that was really nice yeah. way of doing it so um and I got to do Bollywood dancing which oh, yeah. I've never That's done amazing. before <laughs> yeah I felt really odd there because the next day my shoulder really ached and I was like I can't work out on my shoulder oh, and I was like you were doing too many of those I was Maybe changing too many light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting old. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> getting out of practice. But no, that was really good. That it was really lovely. Was. Wasn't it? Something yeah. different, right? It was good. And again, it, you know, it allowed 
couples to see vendors being themselves yeah, and having exactly, a laugh exactly. as opposed to just standing with their pop-up banner. Yeah. That's right. And I think that's really important. <laughs> and it's like when we do this podcast or you do Facebook Live, there's little things that go wrong or the people that walk past us <laughs> 15 minutes ago interrupting yes. you speaking, you know, that's life and it's yeah, how we deal with things. Is. And with a wedding, things go wrong or things yeah. don't go to plan. So yeah. if you know that you've got vendors that can deal with changes that happen at last minute yeah. or can carry on regardless and in fact I've got you know some of the nicest feedback I've had from this summer's wedding mm-hmm. is how I cope when things went wrong oh. and you don't yeah. you always think of the perfect weddings where everything goes to plan and everything's yeah. on time and yeah. you know everything's perfect but actually what what's been nice is when people have said you know this happened and this happened and we couldn't control it and so many things you know are beyond our control mm-hmm. And Ross just carried on, so yes. I think that's important as well. Don't don't look for perfection in people. Yeah, I think that's very true. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. So we've given lots of tips and advice. Let's just sum up a few things we've said. We said about researching wedding fairs first and foremost, didn't we? And we having a little bit of an idea of the wedding you want. Still be open minded, and it can change, and you can be inspired when you go there. But have a, a little bit of an idea of what you're looking for. And questions that you're going to ask, I think that's really key. Know what you want to ask certain certain vendors. So instead of going away overwhelmed, you go away with answers to your own questions. Exactly. I think that's really important. Look at body language. Look at people that are open and approachable and not hid behind their desk. Also not on their phones. I've seen it happen so many times. You know, sat drinking something on Facebook, you know, should be engaged at all times. Um, Definitely. What else did we say, ladies? You've had lots of lots of ideas don't go, don't go alone that's yes. a really good one yeah, take someone exactly. with you but, but we didn't say with <laughs> who you take with you yeah, yeah be selective, selective. <laughs> yeah wear flats wear yeah, flats yeah, that's yeah. a good I'm one like sensible shoes sensible, sensible shoes <laughs> sensible shoes <laughs> absolutely men and women they should have some kind of you know mm. beverages and you know things yeah. like that but just in case they don't energy bar yeah. Oh, energy bar and a drink yeah that's yeah. so true and actually linking to that I know I spoke about the special offers as well but samples of things if there are samples available like cake I mean who doesn't like cake <laughs> who doesn't love cake <laughs> if there are samples you know walk away with those you know and take them with you and yeah, try make them the most you know, of them. make the yeah. most of it make the most absolutely. of it absolutely and yeah. vendors like it when you do actually exactly. yeah. exactly. when you take stuff away because it's yeah. You know, people are interested in what you've got that's to right. offer that's there, right. and that's really important. And I think just have fun. Just have fun. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. As that with wedding planning, enjoy yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, I think you need to be open too, because you'll sometimes you find, especially when well, when the bad and the I've been to. No, but that's not looking bad. But um, <laughs> when I've been um, where they've set the, the rooms up and you, you try to stand at the front of the table, there is literally you'll see you know couples come in and they are scared to approach and they don't want you to talk to them. Yes. So you do put that body language, but it's also for the couples. My advice to you would be to just be a little bit brave than you normally are. Yes. Be a bit more con- you have a bit more conviction than you usually are. Yeah. Because they're there for you. Um, they're not there to hurt you. No. Um, but they're there for you to, to give you information. Um, if they do come off too pushy, that's fine. Just you know, literally, like um, Ross said, just say, "Oh, I see my mum over there," and just leg it. <laughs> just leg it. Just do it. Because I know that's true. That's true. But if you can't say no now, it's a lot harder yeah. down the line exactly. when they're being pushy yeah, and you so book them. So, you know, if you don't like them, they're just a stranger you've met at a wedding exactly. fair and you've never seen them again. Yeah. So I oh, think be a bit that, braver. Yeah, be brave yeah. Like someone that, that offer expires. Because most good, you know, most good vendors will always say that, oh, um, after the wedding fair, expi- um, you know, the same offer that I have expires two months from now. So yeah, that, yeah, I think that's really important yeah. because you said about, you know, taking up offers, which yeah. I think is really great. Yeah. Um, what I say in the book, not slightly contradicts it, but I say don't, don't go with someone just because yeah, they've got yeah, an yeah, offer. So I think yeah, I it's good what you say, that yes. if somebody carries on that offer, like if I do say, I don't know, 5% off or, you know, a mm. free prints or whatever, I make sure it's valid until, you know, like you say, two months. So yeah. they can meet me, have a consultation, exactly. get to know me, think about it. So the offer's still there. There's yeah. still a benefit to meeting me at the wedding fair, yeah. but it's not a pressure, no, you know. Yeah. And from a vendor's point of view, I don't want to be booked just because I'm 10% cheaper than the guy next to me. No, I want to be booked for <laughs> my products and yes, the, and the, the offer is a, is a bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah. do you take advantage of the offers and, and have a yeah. look at them? Yes. Um, but, but offers give you a little bit of a position of power as yeah, well as a yeah. vendor, yeah. I think. And it's really important to maintain that 
dynamic Mm -hmm. you know it's like the consultations I do a lot in couples homes because then they they feel a bit more in control. I get to know who they are. I get to see them in their natural environment. It makes it sound like a docu- uh, wildlife documentary in their natural habitat. Yeah, yeah, but you do get to know people. But also that power dynamic is better if yes. they're in my office. Yeah. Even if we're somewhere, you know, in a, in a bar, which I sometimes meet people in. Sure. But there's it's less that, intimidating. It's less intimidating if they're yeah. in their own home. It's a lot easier. When I've done consultations inside, it must be good for you because you can actually see the photos on the wall and see yes. what the kind of style they like. Exactly. Me, I'm looking at what they read. I'm looking at kind of like if there's photos of them on beaches. Yeah. Is there one zip line? I look for little things like that to kind of get a better understanding yeah. of what kind of a honeymoon or wedding I could book for them. So yeah, Definitely. you get to know them a lot better. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and you're bring, more relaxed. bring food if you're doing it. I always bring cupcakes. Yeah, bring food. I bring food. <laughs> there's always cake secret. involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kate for me. <laughs> <laughs> we got your request in that's cool brilliant so you've been really really helpful as ever i knew you would be so thank you very much for all your tips and advice uh one last question that i ask everyone to do mm-hmm. so one not related to wedding fairs or what sure. you do a tip for all the couples listening that are getting married it might be from something you wish somebody had told you prior to getting married yourself or something you wish you'd done or hadn't done following a wedding or even as a guest at a wedding, something that you would like to leave everyone listening with. L- little sound bite or nugget. Okay, so I got married in Barbados. Wow. And um, my husband's from Barbados. So my top tip would be that I didn't think that one day was going to be enough for me. Um, and okay. so I, you can still do this in the UK, you can still have a destination wedding in the UK, which people don't seem to think that you can. Okay. Go away on a hotel. Bring your whole family with you, all your loved ones, and have a whole week of complete... It feels almost illegal, the amount of fun you will have. (laughs) We won't ask any more probing questions. It's it's just so much fun to have all these mini events all around us, your friends, your family. We had game nights, we had barbecues. Oh, brilliant. We just had so much. And so don't get stuck on the day. Yeah, absolutely. Understand it's the the people that's important. That's a really good tip, that's lovely. 10 people, or for me, 123, it doesn't matter. It's actually the people that make your day. Yeah, brilliant. And like you say, if if you're only having a small wedding, maybe have a meal with other people a few nights yeah. before, or yeah. a party with other people. Meal yeah. kit is milk what you're saying. Meal kit. Well, it's work. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. So tell everyone how we can find out more about you. What's your email address and website and your Twitter handle and all that oh, malarkey? Right. So you will find us on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but for Facebook and Instagram in particular, um, you all you need to search for is at not just a wedding fair and then you can always um, email us if you want extra information about you know what we're doing yeah. for future events at info at events inspired by dot com wow. and our website itself um, which includes many of our events but obviously includes our wedding fairs on there as well is events inspired by dot com so www.eventsinspiredby.com Fabulous. And Sophia, do you want to get a little plug in for your oh, travel not? agency as so well? Sophia, Go not just travel, that's my, my second business. And you can find me on Sophia, uh, sorry, not just travel, forward slash sophialeach.com. And um, all my offers are on there. Or well, it's just better to just, just send me an email. So that's at sophia.leach at not just travel.com. Fantastic. Can, cannot say anything you want. <laughs> Brilliant. So as ever, I'm Ross Wilshire, and you can find me at www.rosswilshirephotography.co.uk. The book, How to Have a Wedding, it's individual as, individual as you are. I wish it wasn't such a lengthy title. The amount of times you have to read it out and type it out, I think, oh, why didn't I come up with something shorter? Um, is available on Amazon UK Online, Waterstones Online, and Barnes & Noble. Or if you'd like a signed copy, um, or you want to chat about weddings or podcasts or photography, you can email info at rosswilshirephotography.co.uk and I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as Ross Wilshire Photography or our Wilshire Photo on Twitter because Twitter's a little bit it is. different. It is very different. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you so much thank ladies for joining me today. We've had a little bit of jazz music, we've had waitresses walking past. It's been eventful but you are event organisers so it's going to be eventful. Um, thanks once again and take care everyone and happy wedding planning everybody. Bye for now. Bye.